We'll take just a minute to talk about flight zones on individual animal and point of balance and where you need to be relative to changing an animal's direction and basically changing their mind about they, what they want to do. Uh, this whole process is very simple and takes very little movement, but you, you can do it on an individual basis or on a herd basis and have the same general result. As you approach a cow and as you go toward her, there's a point that she's going to start moving away from you or moving. As she moves, and she doesn't want me to get any closer proximity, I can build speed by getting closer to her as she goes around that pen. But if I want to stop her, I back away from her, and she stops. So my proximity to that cow affects how she responds. Now, if you want to drive a cow or pull a sick animal out of a pen or whatever, it's important to know where their point of balance is, where you can change their direction and change how they actually respond to you. I'll take just a minute to kind of work this cow around and see if I can affect her movement. Now she's a little distracted by where the camera's located, so it'll take a minute to get her attention back on me. But as I walk toward her hip, I should draw her head to me as I back away. I can keep her position in that where I want it. Now then, I have the ability to either move her to the left or the right. The way she's positioned with her right front foot back, she's wanting to go that way. So as you're looking at a cow, it's easy to change her direction by how you position her front feet before you make that first approach. So her natural inclination was to turn that way, so if I wanted her to go the other way, I would have had to reposition myself over far enough around here to get the cow to move. Now I should be able to draw her attention to me. If I step forward, she should go that direction. Once again, she was set up to do that. Her feet were ready. You can change that point about. The cows are coming at you down facing you and you want them to go past you, you move toward them. As you move toward cattle, it speeds them up and they'll come past you. It'll be a little difficult to demonstrate that on this cow, but in this particular pen. But the thing that I want to demonstrate on this cow is you can actually change direction by pushing her. I can pull her around to the left. I can stop her by stepping away from her, go back to her. If I want her to pull her this way once again, I can just step a little further. I want to push her away from it. Her point of balance, I'm a little out of position, so I've got to come back this way, turn her head away from me, get her to go away, and then I can turn her whatever direction I want to. Once again, drive on her hip, back away from her until she stops. And once again, I can draw her head to me and turn her this way. Or if I change my position, I can turn her toward that fence. It takes only a little bit of difference. You know, I get, get over here and we'll turn her around. She's listening to the dog right now. turn her back this other way. Hmm. Takes very little movement on that cow part to get it done, but I've got to get in the right position to get her to move. If I approach her, just, if I hit that point, she'll respond and I'm in her flight zone and her point of balance changes and she'll move away from me. Uh, you yep. can do that in a group of cattle as we just showed a while ago on that other set of cows bringing the whole group at one time. Going to pull cattle out of a sick pen, you have to be able to, to control their movement by your body position prior to trying to drive them out of that pen. And if you'll do that, it gets very easy to pull sick cattle or to gather cattle or anything else. The principles are the same whether you're in the pen or out in the pasture. But you can really get some predictable things done with the cattle by how they respond to you. And you can draw their attention to you. I want her to go this way, so I've got to step across her point of balance, step back into her. She's a little distracted at the moment. Once again, I could have made her move, but let her get through with her business. And once again, put pressure on her head. Just gonna turn around one little step at a time. Right, if she doesn't want to go that way, I've got to reposition myself. A lot of times cattle do not want to turn to the side where they've got an ear tag. 
because it blocks their vision and they're more easily turned away from an ear tag. There she finally, now I've got to push her far enough that she'll change vision. Now see as I back toward her, she's still looking at me out this eye. I can draw her attention, her head turns slightly, and then I can push on this hip and turn her this direction. What else, Ben? So, um, as far as if you were, you might just talk about her flight zone, we'll put, I mean, she's fairly calm cattle, and so you can... I think it seems like you can get a lot closer to her than probably, yeah. you know, other I'll, cattle. I'll bring one of these others in here just to show the difference. Okay, great. Each cow has a different flight zone, as we mentioned. This cow I can get within a foot or two of her before she responds to me, which actually makes it more difficult to do a lot of the things we're talking about because it gets you out of position and you have to back up quicker and faster than you would on a cow that responds as you walk toward her. See, as I walk toward this cow, she doesn't even pay me any attention until I'm within about two feet of her. I'll swap her out and bring a cow in here that flight zone will be considerably different than that. You want to talk about singles versus working multiples as far as or that sometimes you know they get a little you know if you have a one that's crazy a single put something in with her is that true or is that yeah. hold on if let me let me zoom in on you. That are calmer, okay go ahead again. If you have some cattle that are calm and some that are a little flighty, putting the, the two together does help to some extent. You can do some of that by the way you handle that individual animal. A lot of times we'll put a wild animal in a pen, what we call wild, and just leave them. If we'll actually spend a little bit of time settling that animal and getting them quiet and still on their feet before we leave them, it'll reduce their stress. Because movement builds movement, even if it's an individual or a herd. And so if that animal is stressed and you put it in a pen and it's just constantly bouncing off the walls, if you'll take a little bit of time to slow it down, calm it down, before you leave, it'll normally stay that way. If not, then you may try to mix those calmer cattle with them until they have somebody, some companion, uh, to help them settle down. Well, I'm going to pick one particular cow out of here and bring her out. This is cow. We were short sorting that cow out of the other pen. I used those other cows turning. It looked like I wasn't really doing anything, but I was turning those cows that were in front of this particular cow behind her and using them to push her out of that herd. As she came down that other fence, that's not a very good fence over there. So if I put pressure on her to try to sort her off from that one that was following in the calf, I could have very well tore the fence down. It's important to be stay calm and quiet when you're handling these cattle to make sure that they stay calm and respond to you. If they get frightened, they don't pay attention to the things we want them to pay attention to, and that's us. They'll start trying to jump fences to get away from you. So as we got her into this alleyway, I wanted her to come back into this little pen. There's no way I could do that if I walked around behind that cow. I couldn't control her movement and her direction. So my objective when I went into the alleyway was to draw her attention to me and then back away from her and draw her to me and I would be in position to turn her in this gate. 